Father, we glorify your name. We honor your name, Jesus. You are worthy of all We honor your name, Jesus. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy, Father. We thank you where there is unity, Lord God. There is a blessing. You command a blessing. And so, Father God, we bring our hearts and our lives before you. And we ask you, Father God, to deal with our hearts. Lord God, deal with our minds and our thoughts in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we glorify your name. We glorify your name. You thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise. Father, we exalt your name, Lord. Oh, we Lord, honor your name. We honor your name. Thank you, Jesus. Praise. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. You are worthy. You are worthy. Father, we exalt your name. We exalt your name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Softly. Lord, we thank you for your softly, grace. Softly, 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 Lord, softly. Lord, we thank you thank for you, your grace. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For Raba baba basu ndoro bobo bobo shote kere be 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 sete karaba. Raba baba basu ndoro bobo bobo shote kere be. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Father, we ask you, Lord God, to fill this place in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your sons and your daughters. We thank you for your people this morning, Lord God, as we come before you. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord God, that your heart is to connect with us. That, Lord God, your heart is to be here with us in the name of Jesus. And so, Lord God, we invite your presence. We welcome your presence in the name of Jesus. Thank you that your spirit dwells with us. Thank you, Father God, that there's nowhere we are, you are not there. Lord God, you are always with us. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God, we bring ourselves before you. Lord God, that's all we have to offer. It's ourselves. It's our lives. It's all that we are before you in the name of Jesus Christ. And so, Lord God, I pray this morning. This morning is about connecting with you. This morning is about meeting you. Lord God, where we are with all that is happening in our lives, we desire to meet you to spend time with you lord god in the scripture it's clear your heart is to dwell among your people is to be in the center of who we are lord that's what we want this morning you to be the center of who we are you are the one leading us in the forefront it's you we depend on it's you we rely on in the name of jesus christ and so this morning lord god i pray walls are broken down barriers are removed in the name of jesus and that there is a clarity in our hearing there's a clarity in our eyes to see you father and as we see and as we hear we respond in the name of jesus we are those who listen and we are those who obey we are those who listen and we are those who respond in the name of Jesus Christ. And so we thank you this morning. We thank you this morning. Oh, we bless you, Lord God. We bless you, Lord God. How good and pleasant it is when brethren, brothers and sisters dwell together in unity. Lord, I thank you. God, where unity is, you command a blessing. Your presence is there. Your spirit is there. And so, Father, Lord, we come before you this morning. Oh, because we desire you above all else. We need you this morning. Heavenly Father, anoint and grace the worship team this morning as they lead. Father, as they themselves press into your presence, into the, into the throne room, Lord God. Now, Father, the church, the body of Christ, we are encouraged to press in as well and to move forward because we desire to see you. We desire to gaze upon your beauty in the name of Jesus. To truly, truly see you, Father. 
and so we thank you lord god for the gifts and the talents thank you father god for the opportunity to use them to bring honor to your name and to point others to you in the name of jesus christ and so father god i ask you to minister to your people this morning minister to them meet them at their point of need meet them at their confusion meet them at their worry or or anxiety meet them at their fear meet them lord god in their joy meet them in their victory meet them in their battles lord meet them this morning wherever they are in the name of jesus because you are the only answer you are the only way out and so father in the name of jesus lord god bring us to that place that process of laying things down giving them over to you lord god and trust in you fully that lord you are in control and so we can take joy lord god we can hold on to peace in the name of jesus heavenly father we bless you i declare over your house great faith i declare over your house lord god and expectant faith in the name of jesus expecting of you believing hoping lord god in the name of jesus we are those who come believing that lord you are who you say you are and you can do what you say you will do in the name of jesus christ and so we declare faith over your people faith to believe for the supernatural faith to believe for what we cannot see but lord god we know who you are and you are the god of the impossible and so we honor your name this morning we glorify your name this morning father surround your people surround your people lord in the name of jesus oh we glorify your name we honor your name we honor your name bless your people thank you now in the name of jesus christ we pray amen amen sing praises to your name oh lord praises to your name oh lord for your name is great and greatly to be praised Let's do that one more time. I sing praises to your name. Oh Lord, oh Lord, praises to your name. Oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. We need your healing touch, Lord. We need your healing touch. Oh Lord, need your healing touch. Oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. Oh 
and is worthy of all praise. And my heart should sing how great is our God. Oh, we worship you, Lord God. You're the name above.
It's a privilege to worship you. Maker of the universe. It's an honor just to stand before you with a great, with a grateful heart. I lift my hand to you, proclaiming God, you reign with a grateful heart. With a grateful heart, I lift my hand to you, proclaiming God, you One more time we give you glory, say. 
Thank you, Father. We exalt your name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We give you glory. Father, we exalt your name. We thank you this morning. We thank you this morning. We thank you this morning. How will you know? How will you know? Great are you, Lord. Great Father, we worship your name. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. We do that one more time. Great are you, Yes, Lord. 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 Father, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we exalt your name. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Father, we magnify your name. We magnify your name. Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, as we as we as we worship this morning, there is this song, there is this passage. Um, I, I was reading this week, and it's Deuteronomy 34 at the end of the verse, at the end of the chapter. This is this is, you know, basically talking about Moses' death now, you know, kind of the final days. And at the end of the chapter, this is what it says. And there has not risen a prophet since in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. None like him for all the signs and wonders that the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt, to Pharaoh and to all his servants and to all his land, and for all the mighty power and all the great deeds of terror that Moses did in the sight of all Israel. You know, this is, this is the, this verse sums up Moses' life. You know, years of walking with God, years of leading the people of Israel. And, and as his final, you know, he's, 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 that's it, he's down, he's going to rest with his father. This, these couple lines formed what moses was about i love that it starts by saying god knew him face to face the relationship came first 
who he was to God, who God was to him, came first. And then it started talking about all these mighty acts. And as we were worshiping, this is what I felt my spirit. As we were worshiping, you know, it's something that I, I read Moses' life. And I, and I, you ooh and you are ah, about Moses. You know, as I went to this book, it's just these incredible things that God did in him. And so as we sing about, you know, great are you, Lord, or how great are you, how great is our God. And, and it's this incredible statement. You know, the question is, how great is your God? How great do you believe him to be? You know, is it just nice, cute words or is it something that I know? Or if I don't know it, Lord, it's something I want to know. I want to know how great you are for myself. I want to know so when I sing, I'm not singing because it's a great song and I know the words, but I'm singing because I know it and I'm in pursuit of knowing it, that Lord, you are great. And as we were worshiping and I was thinking about this, God says, listen to me, as great as Moses was and as great as all the things that he did, we have seen greater because see all the signs and wonders that happen never changed their heart. It never changed the hearts of Israel. They still did what they wanted to do. And God spoke of a time when he would put his word in our hearts. And so from the inside out, we will love him and serve him. And so you and I are living actually in greater times. Because the Spirit of God now resides in me and my heart is changed. And so I'm able to love the Lord from a deeper place. And God says, as great as that was, listen to me, what Jesus did on the cross is much greater. And that's where we are living. And so, yes, God is great. Truly, He is great. But understand, yes, God, it's incredible. I love to see the sea open. I love to see, you know, locusts and all these incredible things. But Lord, what you have done through Jesus Christ on the cross is much greater. And that's where you are and I are. The Spirit of God dwells in you. Wherever you are, He is. Wherever you go, Adesso Him there. And so we are living in a space and time where the Spirit of God is. Listen to me, you read it. It says God would come down or God would then the cloud would descend and then there was God. But now he says I dwell in temples not made by man, our hands or mortar or stone, but I dwell in temples made of flesh. You are that temple. And so when we talk about how great God is, come on, we must understand. He is actually great. That's where he is. That's who he is. And so I would love for us to take that song again. And as we do, I want to encourage you. Anytime you're ready, you can give your tithe and, and go back there. But I just want to go right back into that song and just spend some time to worship God. And really declare how great God is. And we're just going to move right on, alright? Father, we bless your name. We bless your name. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Oh, yes. Great are you, Lord. Great are you,
for who you are we thank you for your goodness grace thank you father god for everything everything you do in us everything lord god you have shown us lord you are champion you are great you are powerful you are mighty and lord we thank you today for everything that you're doing all that you are and Lord, I pray, you know, as we're talking about this, that we truly understand. Father, Lord, even if it's a small amount, how great you are, how truly powerful you are in the name of Jesus. And so we are those who sing from a place of experience, a place of knowing, Lord, that we know how great you are. And so, Father, we thank you for those for the ability and the opportunity to give. Father, as you've called us to be givers, to be those that are generous, we thank you for your provision in our life. And we bless you now in your sons and we pray. Amen, 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 amen. Could we give God a clap offering? And let's bless the Lord. Want to do that first? Okay. I'll call him up for you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. So what I'm going to do, I'll just have the kids come up. Children, children, you guys can come up. Just want to pray for you. I think this is our third week of, uh, of our teaching, our study. <laughs> Here comes James. Passion, the man. Listen to me. We're run. Come on, Luki. Just gonna take my time. All right, could you guys just stretch your hands to them for me? Gonna pray, Lord. Mm -hmm. Yes. Kim, you wanna come up too? So we pray for you. Kim will be, Kim will be teaching this morning. So. <laughs> All right, Father, we just thank you right now for. The kids, we thank you for Kim. We thank you, Lord God, for entrusting um, their, their lives and who they are to us. Lord, because of that, we bring them back to you. 
And we ask you for grace. We ask you for wisdom. Lord, as we teach and impart your word, help us to, to accurately, Lord God, um, Lord, give them a picture of who you are. Lord, not to lead them off, but Lord God, to give them what they need, to point them to you. And so as they go, I pray they will learn lots. They'll have fun learning about you, understanding and getting to know you. And I thank you for their faith, Lord God. And, and as they grow in you, Lord, who they are today and the men and women they will become, I pray what we're doing now will plant seeds. Lord, anoint and grace came as she teaches. Father, give her what she needs this morning to impact the lives of the children. We give you thanks. In your sons, then we pray and we say... Amen, amen, amen. All right, guys. Amen. Go off with Auntie Kim. Come. Come on. Come on. Come. No, no. Come on. That is one. All right, go. You're fine. Go ahead. All right. God bless Kim. Amen. 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 Good morning, everyone. We're so excited to be here this morning. Another Sunday, another moment in the presence of God, another moment together. And um, we're just really blessed um, by the grace of God. You know, it's interesting um, that, you know, this week we had a, a meeting with a pastor. Uh, Pastor Jeff Harmon, who has been um, one of our mentors in our life, someone that we can process things through. And this week we met with him, and, um, you know, he gave us a word that was very confirming to us. And, um, and I, I believe that the Lord is showing us something about uh, preparation um, when you are going about to host a group of 50 people or 30 people, 20 people, um, what do you have to do beforehand? You have to prepare, right? I am very familiar with this process, being out at Moreland's, that um, things don't just appear. Um, you know, meals and food and all those things, there's preparation to go first. So before... Um, the people comes the preparation. And I believe the Lord has had us in a time of preparation um, and getting us together. You know, there's a season for everything. Ecclesiastes talks about this. there's a time for everything. Mm -hmm. And as we go through the seasons of our life, we accept. We try to grow in our maturity and accept the seasons for what they are. And lots of times we can become disheartened when we actually don't understand the season that we're in. And, um, and so the Lord, I believe, is preparing us for a season um, of growth and expansion. Um, there was a lot that was shared with us, but um, as Pastor Jeff felt that he had a word for Dwight and I, but also Generations Church, um, and it comes from, but I'm going to share a piece with you, um, Isaiah 54. It says, sing, O barren one who did not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, you who have not been in labor. For the children of the desolate one will be more than the children of her who is married, says the Lord. Verse number two, enlarge the place of your tent and let the curtains of your inhabitations be stretched out. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For you will spread abroad to the right and to the left, and your offspring will possess the nations and will people the desolate cities. Fear not, for you will not be ashamed. I believe that um, God is, is sharing with us um, ways that we as a church also need to step out mm -hmm. and enlarge the place of our tent yeah to prepare the place but to prepare the people um and it in verse in chapter 53 you know it talks about first preparing and talks about how we we shall not be afraid that we're going to move ahead 
And then in verse, in chapter 55, it says now, now come everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and he who has no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Is it, isn't it significant that first God talks about the preparations and enlarging your tent, and then he says to people, now come. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now come into this place. And I believe that over the last six months, um, we began to pray just about how the Lord wants to set up the church for this season. And, you know, um, it was kind of unexpected, in, uh, but in around November of 2021, um, we began to meet with a young engaged couple um, who sits right there, Akeem and Moesha. Um, who have been raised up in Generations Church, and we have seen grow and change, develop and be discipled. We have witnessed some amazing maturity and wisdom in them. Um, every time we end a session with them, I think, I think to myself, and I've said to Dwight, I think that the Lord has literally preserved these two and know that there's a call on their life. But early in November, God started to speak to us about them, Um, And we felt that we were to just spend time. And we kind of also had to spend time with them because they were in pre-marriage counseling. Not had to. We were privileged to spend time with them because they were about to get married. And and so we were doing their pre-marriage counseling. And so we had some really good times together, times of talking. But every time we ended, I thought to myself... This is more than just about their marriage. Mm -hmm. God has a purpose and calling on this couple's life. And oftentimes when we would talk to them, I'd see the process that the Lord had brought Dwight and I through of just, he was stretching them in faith. Yeah. He was, he was causing them to fall back into his arms and dependency on him at every turn and corner and so we, we saw this as so obvious because, you know, as they had to believe God for their wedding, as they had to believe God for provision, we just saw that their response to the Lord was constantly to turn to him and to, rec- to, um, to respond to him in faith. Mm-hmm. And this was so encouraging to our hearts. And so we began to pray, and the Lord started to speak to us about them in ministry. And uh, we said nothing to them because... I felt like the Lord would confirm to them if that was the case. And we did not want it to be something that we were dragging out of them or saying, guys, this would be a good idea. We wanted the Lord to speak to their hearts and so to know that the Lord was talking to them too. Yeah. And so it was um, at the end of December that we were in a conversation and we just asked, so what do you hear the Lord saying to you guys? And um, both of them, in different ways, basically said that they had felt the Lord tugging their hearts towards ministry. And we were kind I didn't want to express myself by jumping up and down right there. I played it totally cool, and I was like, really? That's, that's interesting. Um, and just kind of thought, so what do you think he's saying? And, and Akeem d- described his heart for young people, but also just for ministry in general and wanting to um, give in to young people's lives and into our youth. And and I thought to myself, I think that the God is moving right now. Mm -hmm. I think he's doing something. And so we, we, again, we played it cool and just said, well, let's keep praying. Let's see where God leads. And the more that we met with them, the more these conversations came up and we, we kept bringing them up and talking through them and it became clear that God had raised up a son and daughter in this house mm-hmm. for such a time as this. And no, I mean, we've expressed how proud we are of them and of the decisions that they have made, but um, this was something that the Lord was doing, not us. And so... Um, they got married, and we gave them a little time to <laughs> process that, but began meeting with them again. 
And so this, as we met with them, it became clearer and clearer that the Lord was putting something on their hearts, but also tying our hearts together in vision and in understanding what the Lord was doing in ministry. And so um, we, we have more, on a more serious level, discussed whether the Lord is wanting to set them in place in Generations Church. You know, Generations Church this month, coming up in April, is 15 years old. And we have been through every season, I think, that... I, well, maybe there's more seasons, but um, in terms of the types of things that churches go through, I think that we're walking into a, a maturity in our, our church. And uh, we've been through a lot during this pandemic, and God has yeah. pruned and, and stripped away, and, and he is bringing um, us to a place where he's saying to prepare. Yeah. And so even when that means in setting people in the places that they need to be in so that when the people come, so when the thirsty come and the hungry come and those who are lost come, that we are prepared for them. And for 15 years, Dwight and I have been um, pastors of Generations Church, what would be considered as the um, only hired pastors um, but we've had pastors, we've had Janetta and Magdi, we've had Alice and Joseph, we've had Opal and Carl, we've had many people serve and come throughout the years that have pastored people alongside of us. But we have never actually hired another pastor alongside us. So this is where you come in. We need your prayers. We don't, we're not just stepping out into this alone, Dwight and I alone, but as a church, we have a decision to make, and we want that decision to be guided by the Lord, not by us. And I know that Akeem and Moesha do not want to walk outside of the will of God for their lives either, and of course, we, we don't want that. So we know that everything is to be brought in prayer. We have been praying. They have been praying. We have sought the elders' advice, and now we're coming to the church and saying, guys, we need you to pray. We need you to pray about the next season of Generations Church and what God has called us to. There is a need in our um, city, in our nation, for ministry to young people, and so we want to actively pursue what God is doing here and now and believe that this young couple is going to be a part of what God is doing in generations. However, Amen. we also want to hear your hearts and your voice on the matter. Mm -hmm. And so over the next couple of weeks, we would love if you would pray with us as we consider this. Uh, Amen? Amen. 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 All right. So without further ado, um, let me invite Mr. Magdi up this morning. Um, he will be speaking. Um, and sharing the word this morning. So as he comes, make him feel welcome. Um, oh, yes. There you go. Is that good enough? Yeah, sure. Can I get this up? Oh, more? Yes, please. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Need another mic or one is good? No, should one is enough, yeah. Okay. Good morning, church. Good morning. It's really good to see you and to see Brother Joseph as well, who came all the way from Kenya to join us today. Welcome home. Um, it is really an honor for me to share with you, and I mean it. When somebody is being pushed and forced to study the word for two weeks, try to understand, try to meditate, try to reflect, it is a great benefit to me personally when I'm preparing for a sermon. And, uh, and the Lord spoke to me in so many ways. And uh, I always say to Pastor Dwight, I think I'm the only, the most person who benefit from that is that because I dig into the Word and I'm trying to understand and I'm trying to apply it in my life and so on. But today I also believe that God will give me the grace to be able to effectively communicate what I learned today over the last two weeks. 
The title of the message that the Lord has placed on my heart today is The Battle of the Mind. And I'm speaking from a personal perspective here. Um, the reason, the main reason why I'm talking about this is that uh, last Monday, something uh, challenging happened to me, to me and my son as well. And I have to pause and reflect and learn. Obviously, when something happened like this, it's not haphazardly. It's not uh, by accident. The Lord is behind it to teach me something. And with his grace and mercy, I've learned one or two things, and I would like to share with you. So this battle of the mind is, a, uh, is also born out of my interest in counseling and psychology. And clearly, the mind is a critical, critical part of this. And as I studied, the, 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 the topic is so big. It touches on psychology, it touches on neurology, and of course, the spiritual dimension. So I'm going to only to focus today on the spiritual and biblical side of the battle of the mind. I'm guided by uh, the Apostle Paul. Um, in his writing to the Romans. Uh, the Apostle Paul is widely known as the ultimate um, mind warrior, the ultimate thought warrior. Um, he, he actually, the Lord has given him very sharp mind and very sensitive um, spirit to receive from the Lord. And you remember that the, his statement, I think in Romans 7, he said that those things which I desire to do, I couldn't do it. And those things which I know I shouldn't do, I find myself doing it. The Lord has given him a very sharp mind to express that in a very short, concise way. And if we really wanted to grow in our faith, we have to be brutally honest before the Lord and with ourselves, in the same way as Apostle Paul. So, our text today is from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 2. And uh, because I'm a bit dyslexic, I'm going to ask my wife to read it out um, in her beautiful style. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. So, this is Romans 12, verses 1 to 2. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Amen. Amen. I want just to put uh, a little bit of texting of, sorry, for our con to put the words we just r heard in a context. This is part of uh, a very foundational book in the New Testament. It is probably the most influential book that affected so many Christian leaders, including St. Augustine, for example, and uh, Martin Luther. And uh, it has a little bit of introduction in chapter 1 and a little bit of uh, conclusion, or concluding remark in chapter 15. And in between, the main bulk is can be divided into two sections. The first section, which is chapter 1 to 11, talk about, it has a very, um, it is very, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? It's like a thesis in the doctrine of uh, justification by faith and, and a highly uh, lots of thought and philosophical the other part which is the easy one for me is the practical side how do you transfer and transport and, and translate this theory about the faith into practice and some people call it the transformed life and uh, this is what this passage is all about it is the beginning of the second second portion which describe how could we live before the Lord, transformed life, transformed mind, and living for him and for him alone. 
In the middle of chapter 11, the previous one, Paul extensively talked about God's mercy. And by his sheer grace, we've been accepted in the kingdom, in the beloved. And here in the chapter 12, at the beginning of that practical side, he is reminding them of the mercies of God. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, and by the mercies of God, reminding them of the mercies of God, the undeserved grace, present your body as a living sacrifice. Now, this is a much natural response or appropriate response to God's grace and mercy. You don't have to be a theologian or a rocket science to know when somebody offers you something for free. Pure grace, you respond by submitting yourself to him. So it's a very simple argument St. Paul is presenting to, to them. And it's talking about this submission, this presentation of the body as a living sacrifice is the spiritual worship. And in John, talk about the, uh, in John 4, 24, it says, the God spirit and those who worship him must worship in the spirit and truth. So true spiritual worship is a form of integrity or response which springs out from a deep appreciation of God's and his word. And Paul goes on to verse number two, verse two, which is my main really focus today. And he did not waste any time and went straight to the jugular here, so to speak. He went straight to the mind. If you, are, if you want transformed life, you have to go straight to these things between our ears. This is where the control center, this is where the command center, where this is where we think and process information, this is where we make decision, and it is also the focal point for imagination and our creativity. So he went straight to that portion of our being to direct and to transform our life into to be in a better place. I remember when I was working uh, offshore in the oil industry, and if I have been to to the, to the rig or uh, a drill ship, the first thing they do, they take me to uh, an induction tour. Uh, not because I'm a VIP, I'm just because I'm naive and I haven't a clue what I'm doing about the operation. So the first thing they do, they take me to the control uh, room, and it tends to be in the, it's like a tower, and it has, uh, it has about 40 or 50 screens monitoring screens, some of them thermal screen to tell you about the temperature, some of them has a pressure gauge, some of them has all sorts of other things which I don't fully really understand. And uh, it, it, it monitored every aspect of the operation. Imagine there are about 170 guys like me around doing all sorts of funny things around, and these guys, these four or five people there, monitoring everything we do to make sure we are doing it safely and according to the rules and the plan and the objective of finding oil and gas. It's very sensible. What I notice about this room, three things. One, it is spotless clean, squeaky clean. It was squeaky clean when you have two surfaces, so clean and no grease, it makes a sound. This is so clean, so tidy. And the other thing is that it is quiet. The people who work there, well, about three or four guys there, they whisper to each other because they don't want any loud noise to distract them. The other thing is that they don't allow anybody to come in and out. That's it. This is the only time I see this room. I'm not allowed to go in for any reason. Even if during my work or going to the rig floor or somewhere, there's a fire, I'm not allowed to go up and telling them. There's a hotline, uh, a hot phone to tell the control what's happening there. So the place has to be so clean, so tidy, no distraction whatsoever. Now, I always wonder if we really want to have a pure life, a blameless life before the Lord, don't we have something similar? Clean mind, tidy, no, interru no interruption, no distractions. 
and this is what we need to do. And this is what Paul is urging us, to renew our mind, to get rid of the thing that is distracting, the thing that contaminates us, the thing that is not helpful, the thing that is not really according to God's desire and plan for us. So we have to guard our control centers so much our minds from any contamination or dissection. Proverbs 23, 7, I love this verb. A man thinks, as a man thinks, so is he, and some translations, so, so is he become. Because what troubled with the, with the, with the mind is that the, our activities, our life take the directions of the most influential thoughts, or the most dominant thought, or the strongest thought, and, and it direct us to that. And if we repeat this so many times, it becomes part of who we are and become addicted or become distorted in one way or another. So this is the psychological aspect of it. But the Bible put it so simply, so beautifully, so concisely. A man, as a man thinks, so is he, or so is he becoming. And then it is somewhat shocking to know the St. Paul talking to the believer, Gentile and Jews alike. He's telling them, these people have accepted the gospel. These people have endorsed the message of salvation. They all accepted the Lord and his coming, and his coming back again, and he's been raised up, and they know all of them, but yet he's telling them to renew their mind. Yet he's telling them, look, there's so much ahead of you to do. The Lord has done everything to save you, to redeem you, but it is our part now to work out our salvation, to renew our mind day by day. It is like a, it's like a passing driving test. It's only the beginning of the adventure. So you have to get in the car, drive every day, practice, improve your skills, and maintain the vehicle. The reality is that we are really in a desperate need to renew our mind. Our mind has been formed by so many things, and nobody, nobody in the face of this earth, that his mind hasn't been formed unless it's been affected by the culture we live in, the subculture, the community we live in, by our family, by the media, by the social media, by our education, by the book we read. Even, and even if you are a visual learner, that includes also the TV, the screen, and everything that is affecting you visually. So we've been affecting by all this, plus our past experiences. Everything has been formed our worldview, our, the way we think and do. The complicated things is that the devil, the enemy of our soul, goes into one of these and uh, distort a little bit here, throw a little bit of doubt, throw a little uh, bit of lies, throw a bit of um, deception, and you have a cocktail of factors producing our mind, twisted mind, carnal mind, devoid of any uh, moral compass. So we are desperate. And St. Paul is very clear about that. He knows the challenge, and he is addressing it. And he, in the first chapter of the practical section, he go in with such a storm. He know what he's at. He knows what, what the challenge is for the Romans and for you and for me. And uh, one of the things I mentioned is the past experience and some bad news. Uh, last Monday, uh, I went, this is where my, I had a, um, a negative mind uh, set. Last, month, uh, last Monday, I went with my son to the uh, examination center. Uh, I think in Jamaica they call it uh, the depot. When I mentioned this word, depot, shiver, th go through my spine. And uh, actually, the full name is it, uh, 
motor vehicle examination depot. This is the right word for it. And there's no other depot in Jamandaville called that way. It's only one depot. Is there a depot for other things? I don't think so. Only one depot. And the, the name scared me. And I went there with the negative thoughts about so many things I have seen and observed and so on. And also, my son was in a negative thoughts, a negative mindset, uh, for different set of reasons. So when you have two people, both of them coming into this place with the negative thoughts and rubbing each other, obviously the uh, direction of the conversation went south. It wasn't in the wrong, it wasn't in the right direction at all. So I didn't want to escalate the situation, so I took out my car key, I told him, look, we can go home. Forget about the test, forget about the preparation and the time and the money we spent during the test, the, the, the road, the, um, the, the written exam and the um, parallel parking, the yard exam, we just forget about it. But deep down in my heart, I didn't want to come back again to the depot. And I want... <laughs> I want him to go through that struggle with the depot himself. Now, I couldn't say that because I'm his father, and I, I, couldn't have the heart, I didn't have the heart to tell him that. But what happened next is amazing. True, true interesting things. Three things happen. None of them is, is just happened like this. I, I just feel the Lord was behind every one of them. Number one, surprisingly, my son stayed on at the depot. Number two, surprisingly, he, he was calmed down a bit by the time when he took the exam, the test. And number three, this is the most surprising of all, that after two or th three or four minutes of him driving, the examiner uh, indicated that he passed. Now, that is amazing. This is a quite incredible. If you know me, and you know my son, and you know the conditions we've been through, and so on. And I firmly believe that God has intervened directly in his life, and in my life, despite of our bad mind. So I just praise God. And I attribute this to the prayer of Pastor Dwight and Brother Joseph, because this guy has really prayed for him and for me. I remember at 9 o'clock when I was so low down, I received a message from Brother Joseph and Pastor Dwight encouraging me, supporting me, like they always do. And I responded by thanking them, of course, and I said, God is, and I hinted a little bit about my struggle, and I said, God is sovereign. What I meant by this, really, is that the prospect of my son passing is very bleak, but God's sovereign anyway in his life. But I couldn't say that. I was so brief, and I tried to be religiously correct. Funny enough, I mean, I just find myself, why sometimes we hide behind a good statement, when in fact, we are full of doubt and fear and not belief. And I have to watch out myself for that. When I was at this low point, I was bound down inside. And the word of God in, in Psalm 145, it says that the Lord upholds all those who fall and lift up all who are bowed down. And as indeed I was bound down and God intervened in his life and in my life as well. The chapter 12 verses 2, in here, do not conform to this world, but to be transformed by the renewal of your mind, and by testing you may discern what is the will of God. I'm, I'm focusing on the word testing and discerning here. I want to share my thoughts here. I'm not a theologian. Uh, I haven't read this anywhere. I'm just thinking my thoughts here, and I hope and pray they are, they would resound with you as well. This implies there is a choice to be made. 
a choice of sorting out God's will, which one is and which one isn't, which one is closer to his heart. And also, it means that among a number of options, and these options are the product of our thinking. So I have a challenge, I thought about it, and I think there's an option one, A, B, and C. And I'm right now testing, evaluating, and I'm trying to examine each one of them, which one that will challenge me, which one bring me closer to the Lord, which one, which one that I would be like Jesus a little bit more. And this is the challenge, to test and to examine and to evaluate and assess what option do I have here. Uh, you know, it is important to examine our, when we have an option like this, it's important to examine our motives, not just which one is the perfect will of God, but examine our motives. And um, one of the noble motives to follow Jesus, to be like him, to be imitator of Jesus, nobody could blame you for this. All of us wanted to be imitator of Jesus. Is that right? Now, when I looked at the word imitate, to imitate Jesus in the New Testament, it all came up in association with suffering with Christ, denying myself, long suffering, sacrificial love, carrying my cross daily. So this is the sort of thing we expect the Lord to respond. However, the Lord is, is, is so wise, he doesn't, immediate respond to us, well, okay, let me give this guy a bit of more pain so he would learn and so on. No, he will give us just enough to be able to cope. And if it find too much, he will give us a way out and reaching out to us. So there's a safety net. Even if we are not fully aware of what we're praying, he knows our limitation and he knows how to make us grow in him and to be more like him. About 20 years ago, I faced with a big decision in my life, whether to stay in this big corporation or not, big company in UK, because I felt very unhappy. And I knew being unhappy is not a good reason to leave the company. I have to find something better than this. So I had three options. One, to be independent consultant away from them or I join a small group where I know these people very well, or stay on in my misery with this company. Now, I had to rely on somebody else wiser and understand the word better than me. So I went to my pastor and through praying with him and consulting with him and he counseling me, I examined myself and I come, I come up with two reasons why I want to leave the company and be independent. One is that I want to grow in faith and take risk. Faith and risk are the same, two sides of the same coin. And I also, this is another reason, I want to earn more to be able to support my family better and my extended family and to bless other people who are desperate and for so many reasons. And the Lord in his grace, he gave me both. Now, The Bible is so beautiful in that it encourages us to exercise our free will to think and to assess and evaluate and discern God's will, his good and perfect will for us. But how, how are we going to do this? How are we going to renew our minds? The thing that, that really, uh, the only one or the most important one is to soak my mind with his word, to reflect on his word to talk about his word, to share his word, to hear his word, to apply his word, because the more you apply, the more you hear, and to sing the word, the word become part of who I am. It's like a, it's like a green grass field, and it hasn't been touched for years, and it has so many uh, neuropaths. This is something that we have learned with Pastor Dwight, with the men. The, when you have a habit, when you have any thinking, any thoughts, it creates a neuropath in the brain. 
And there's so many bad neuropaths because we picked up so many rubbish in our life. In order to create a new set of neuropaths, we have to think about godly things, about the Word of God. And, and the, the more we apply the Word of God, the more we think about it, the more we reflect about it, the more we sing about it, it creates a new path, a new way of thinking, and become who we are once this is established in our mind. It is like a renewal, a renewal of the way we think, the renewal for the way we think about things. Our perspective will change, and our desire will change, and our uh, upward looking to the Lord to help us in the time of needs, it changed. The other thing is that to fill this brain, the brain is such a big and, magna and, 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 and huge ability inside this brain, to fill it with good things rather than leaving it empty for the devil to come and steal and, and break. And a beautiful verse here in the Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, Whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent, praiseworthy, think on those things. People have artistic talent to beauty, to singing, to our creative art. Think about these things, that God has created us with imagination and creativity. And if the Lord leads you into that area, that is wonderful to occupy this amazing potential here between our ears. The other thing that Paul mentioned in Corinthians, I, th I talk about um, the battle here. He used a military expression. He said, for though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds, strongholds of the enemies. We destroy arguments. This is where the mind comes in. We destroy argument, and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God, and take every thought captive to obey Christ. Did you, did you notice the, 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 the military style to take every thought captives, to destroy the argument? It is something that it, need, it, it requires of us to be determined, to be resolute, to do that. And I want to finish by just mentioning two things about filling our mind with hope, because hope Life without hope in Christ is so difficult. If I only have hope here and not in eternity, not in the beginning of eternity with Christ, we are so miserable. And this is what Paul said. So Romans 15, 3, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, the other the others, um, verse, which I love so much, I mean, this is my, my big thing now in my mind. So forgive me if I just keep on and on about it. It is in Zechariah 9, 12. Return to you, return to your stronghold, O prisoners. O prisoners of hope, today I declare that I will restore to you double. I love that expression of, of prisoners of hope. It means that you are prisoners. Everywhere you look, you look down with hope, up hope, side hope, west, east. Everywhere you are surrounded by hope. Imagine if you are in a prison cell, and the prison cells typically has six, yeah, six uh, surfaces. The ground floor, well, the the the, the floor the ceiling, and four walls. Now, if you look at the ground and you look down and are feeling down, you are actually bowed down, the Lord promises that he will lift you up for, and he will be with you in that. And when you look to the east, that is where God's glory comes from and enter the temple according to Ezekiel's vision. 
And when you look to the West, it says, For I know the plan I have for you, declare the Lord, plans to prosper. A plan to prosper you, not to harm you. plan to give you hope and a future. And in some translation, a guaranteed future. When you look to the North, the Lord will make you the head, not the tail. When you look to the South, Jesus said, I gave them eternal life. They shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. When you look to heaven in anticipation of the coming of our Savior and King and spending eternity with him, we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses here pointing out to our hope, our living hope, our perfect hope in Jesus. In summary, I'd like to summarize what I've just said. Renewing our minds, in summary, the important thing is to renew our minds by washing our minds with the word. We've just been singing earlier, no foreign God will take your place. And the only way no other God will take his place in our mind, in the top space in our mind, is having his word to be established, well established, well rooted in our mind. And filling it with good things, as we read in Philippians, and filling it with hope, and maintaining a strong prayer life to bring all of this aspect together. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the challenge. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Your word is just full of wisdom and full of discernment. Help us, Lord, to absorb what you've taught us today. Help us, Lord, to embrace the truth of your word. Help us, Lord, to renew our mind daily by washing our minds with your words, with the truth of the scripture. Help us, Lord, to grasp the depth, the width of your love to each one of us. Help us, Lord, to fill our minds with good things, with creative things, with things that it is bring us close to you. Help us, Lord, to fill our mind with hope we have in you. We pray, Lord, for everyone here, Lord, that you will bless them according to their needs, to the need of their spirit to be united with you, to be to a closer walk with you. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will touch each one according to our needs in Christ and fill these needs and overflow to the point the, with the flow of hope will pass among your people. Help us Lord, to raise up, to be raised up as soldier, determined and resolute to follow your ways, the highway, the highway of purity and integrity. We bless you, Father for who you are and what you are about to do among us, in Jesus' name. Thank you very much, Magdi, um, for sharing and encouraging the body. I think, I think messaging, messages on our, our mind, our thinking, the power of our thoughts, how that affects us, how that shapes us, shapes our future, our decision. Um, it's it's one of those things that Paul says. Paul Paul says he he, you know, he communicates and then he then he repeats and then he repeats and then he repeats, and so we 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 get it. Um, and I remember you know Magdi talking to me about the message, and you know one of the things that came to my mind was where we are now. Um, as a world, as a as a planet, there is so much happening, um, and it's just been sequences of major things happening in our world. That you know, maybe at one point, you know, oh, we're little old Jamaica, we're okay, we're not in the Alawa Guan, but I'm sorry, that is not so anymore. You know, all of what's happening is somewhat somehow affecting us, um, and so. It is one of those things where, again, that, that same message about the mind is so important. And so, yes, we are aware of what's happening in the world. But our minds are stayed on Jesus. Our minds are focused on the Lord. Um, and so, yes, your war and rumors of war and there's pestilence, there's disease. Again, the God tells us those things will come. 
they are they will come and so it's kind of that you know that, that that phrase the beginning of birth pains and so we know they are coming we know they're supposed to happen and so we don't fear but because we are conscious and in our minds we're stayed on the lord we operate in faith and i love that verse that last one um magdi when you talk about double double hope um i and i think that's exactly what god wants for us is that we have double hope and so guys love you have a great great day father i just thank you that you bless magdi pour back into him lord god as he has poured out this morning i pray father that we have been attentive and receptive this morning to hear your voice and what you're saying to us father god fill him anew bring deeper revelations for him lord god as he looks further into the mind the thought psychology lord god and and oh the the word and god and all you speak about that and so father we ask you to cover him now thank you for 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 the you know for justinian and lord god him being able to pass this driver's test father god surround him and cover him as this is a new phase and a new season of his life lord god bless your people now we give you thanks in your sons and we pray amen amen love you guys Yo
your name.